face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, guys? And welcome to another Sun and Moon episode from yours truly, the Skyrender. As today's video is going to, of course, maintain it. All the lowland forms and their base stats and possible move pool to some extent. And we're gonna talk a bit about them, you know, what changed between the original form and whether or not these guys actually are viable. So I definitely won't deny that some of these Pokemon definitely got the cold shoulder when it comes to whether or not how good they possible could be, but at the same time, some of them really got, well, definitely better. There aren't really that much shift of stats actually, which had me somewhat disappointed. Most of these Pokemon remain the same base stat total. Like take for example of course Raticate, which is I do believe a 420 base stat total. That is not a lot to work around with, so one really have to of course be very rough and of course polish those edges to make it viable. Maybe in a way that of course Beedrill was made. But yeah, without further ado, let's actually look at all of the Lowland forms and their base stat total. And starting all off is definitely going to be the meme Pokemon itself, a lowland executor, which, well, it kind of falls exactly as the way of the original executor was. I do believe it's slightly stronger, uh, but outside of that, it's pretty much the same. And uh, it doesn't get any redeeming quality outside of this new type being Dragon type, which clearly uh, nullifies a lot of big issues that executor did have. And remaining these kind of bulky stats could be interesting for it, not to say the least. Of course, if it's only actually defining it, will actually be compared to, of course, the likes of Sceptile. Being able to pull that off and be quite unique due to it. It does have a few redeeming qualities. The one, of course, has the likes of Moonlight. It can curse up, which is clearly, you know, the things you kind of want to go with it, since it can't Dragon Dance, sadly. Um, outside of that, it should be noted that it gets a unique move for it, which is called Dragon Hammer, which is a slightly stronger Dragon Claw, and since you won't be, of course, having Outrage, this could be at least a proper move for it to have for the time being, and uh, it's an okay stab. I mean, I would definitely want to see Outrage, but I'm not usually disappointed. I do believe Executor has some relevance in the meta, mostly because of its type being, being well, Smart defensively would be the right word to use, so not to disappoint about the Executor whatsoever. The next one is the Alolan Sand Slash, and it didn't turn out to be slower than its regular form, which, you know, due to this, of course, Pokedex entry saying that it was slower than the regular Sand Slash, well, that's, that's, that's up for definition. Um, battle wise, it's the same, and that's a good thing. It loves a bit of a special attack for more defense, which I think is good for it. Its new typing is Ice Steel. Which also is a great typing defensively. Only have three weaknesses, though two of them being, of course, a four times effective, such as fire and fighting. Having that said, Alolan Sandslash does look fairly well. Uh, it definitely is the better Slush Rush sweeper between him and Beatsig, but granted, they, those two, of course, compared to one another, since Beatsig is, of course, considered a never used Pokemon, which means it's, it's unreliable as a sweeper, and so probably will Sandslash be also. Having that said, it, due to it lacking, of course, um, priorities such as Bullet Punch and Ice Shot, which I do believe is a missed opportunity, uh, it at least gets the likes of Rapid Spin, Icicle Crash, and it gets actually the likes of Earthquake, Iron Head, so there are moves here that does stand out, uh, though having that said, it's a bit unfortunate that uh, it doesn't get, you know, the full moveset it probably was longing for and definitely clearly needed. Um, it gets Wall Stance and stuff like that, but trust me, uh, this Pokemon will probably be more of a never-used Pokemon, sadly, due to its, well, kind of tough not being able to use things. Had it had a priority, it would have been a lot better mod, but as it stands now, it could be um, a Slush Rush Sweeper and a very good one at that, but it's still tough to use in higher competitive plays, if anything. Next one is the Lowland Ninetales. This one I have a bit of a hope for. While it, you know, it lacked, it, it lost attack here for um, getting a more speedier boost, which is awesome. 109 base speed is clearly made for a different kind of meta. So with that in mind, thank God, definitely, uh, it's still, you know, its special attack is still really bad. Even though we get access to Free Strike, Moon Blast, Blister, clearly Dark Pulse. It has a plethora of moves to utilize itself really well. It does even get access to the likes of Nasty Plot. At this time, you're still forced to use life form, I do believe, if you want to use it well. Ninetales is clearly a sweeper without attack, or without an offensive pressure. It also has Ice Shot, which is uh, awesome. Clearly needed that at 109 speed, right? 
But yeah, at this time, Ninetales is still forced to use Light of Nasty Plot to be viable, but it's clearly the better mod between Alolan form of Sandslash and Ninetales, and I would not be surprised to see this Pokemon in UU or RU. It's not good enough for OU, sadly, and um, yeah, I still think its defensive typing is good enough to keep it viable in the long run at least, so definitely forward to seeing Ninetales in the future. Coming on next to the list is actually the Alolan Raticate. And yeah. My god, I wanted this guy to be so good. I really, really, really did. It has Gluttony, which is pretty much unusable due to its typing. And, um. But it does have a few interesting things going for it, and clearly worth mentioning at least. Because this move pool is actually quite interesting, and definitely interesting enough to mention. Of course, it has Hustle. I do believe Hustle will be the go-to ability for it, because at least it kind of breaks through those extra damage. 50% boost in attack, yeah, thank you for that. And, um, and that's actually, of course, Switcheroo, which means that you can actually scarf this thing if you so desire. It gets U-turn, it gets Grass Knot of all the things. Um, let's see, and we have Sucker Punch and Double Edge. Do not use Double Edge. If you want to use Double Edge, do it, use it with a Berry, basically, in Class Mini, if that's the case. But, um, yeah, use Return if you must. And then it has, of course, Quick Attack and Bulk Up. So it does have a few moves that could make it viable. It's just the type that you know, keeps it from being that little extra good. But you can always use it as a final Gambit user. It did get an extra boost in its health, I do, if I recall correctly, if it was defenses. But yeah, I'll definitely be looking forward to using Alolan Raticate, mostly because I do believe it will do well. But I'm definitely thinking it's more of a niche mod than offensive presence mod. Having that said, it's great to see, of course, Raticate get some love. So right, Alolan Raichu. I will say this. Until Pokebank is out, this guy does not learn Surf. I kind of realized that as I was editing that this can not use a TM Surf for this generation. Which means you have to send, of course, a Pikachu with Surf. For this generation to be able to utilize that. Having that said, the new Psychic type make Raichu slightly more viable. Not defensively, it basically cripples it. But offensively, thank you, please. Um, mainly because, of course, you do want to hit those um, poison and fire types that are faster. Because Raichu has that. It's fast. 110 speed has access to Nasty Plot. Uh, gets access to Psychic with his evolved. Can't use it until then. And uh, mainly, I do believe Raichu is semi viable due to this. Um, having that said, um, there is really nothing more happening with Raichu against a regular one, so uh, we just have to see what the meta has in store for this guy, that's really all I can say about it. Oh, Marowak, they screwed you over yet again. Look, I'll be frank with you guys, um, it's it's okay. Um, the new, of course, typing with a ghost and fire definitely helps it out defensively. I do believe that that alone will, you know, save it, but it's still a low base stat total of 4 and 20. It doesn't really excel if anything outside of defense, which the regular form just did. And Fit Club might actually help it though, with you know, an extra boost in its attack with double it, which is going to be extremely helpful, but you're also, also sustainable for knockoffs more than ever. Uh, it's really have to watch out for that. You do get, of course, Flare Blitz and Double Edge. Flare Blitz will clearly help it out with, of course, Rock Head to one of its ability. And then you have, of course, um, what do you call it? It's new ghost type move, which is basically, I do believe, Shadow Bone, or something like that, or Shadow Cloud Club, uh, which is a new uh, physical uh, ghost type move, which is clearly something every ghost type needed. It doesn't excel much more than Shadow Claw, sadly. Uh, and then, of course, you get access to like a Flame Shard. Flame Shard will help with speed, which mainly, or hopefully, will make it good enough for the meta. But the speed is clearly the, the, the issue here. But hopefully, we can pull it off even with that in mind. And now we come to my favorite Alolan form, Persian. I'm sorry to say, guy, I, lo I love this form. I think it's great. And I think, you know, it's it's finally looks like a Persian cat. I I'm sorry, it has the flat face. So I am all about it. So I was pretty surprised how people were reacting, uh, to be completely honest. Though it should be mentioned here. Um, it's not lo no longer a, a physical attacking one. Having that said, it's not like it was famous for its physical attack before, but now it's a probably a more bulkier one, and um, it doesn't look like that by stat alone, but trust me, with Fur Coat, now our ability uh, Lock to Fur Throw is a unique one, bracing its defenses by, I do believe, 50%. It can now take hits, and it's definitely fast enough to take hits too, which means you're not a glass cannon anymore, at least not on the physical side. 
because it still remained its move pool from the normal type variant, because now we're dark type, clearly. Clearly that's a dark type. But yeah, it remains its previous move pool, like a Thunderbolt Ice Beam for some reason. And then we have of course Nasty Plot and of course Dark Pulse. So Persian got a few things going for it, and while it might not be everyone's cup of tea when it comes to this design, if you, um, besides if you ask me of course, it still is one of those Pokemons that I do believe can become a great revenge killer, possible supporter, since it actually gets parting shot too. And comparing this to of course Pangoro, uh, 115 speed instead of 58, yeah you can make sure that you will pull out the parting shot without any damage, so Persian, thank you. Before going into muck here, sorry if not finding a better picture than this. Having that said, Alolan muck is almost okay. Almost. One or five, you know, actually, I should just say this, it's a bulkier Drapion. Um, and, I, and I like that. I do believe we needed this combination yet again. Uh, in, in case of Sun and Weird, I would much rather have seen another fison, uh, poison fire. You no, know, with oil and all, you kind of want it as just burst in flames, but you know, I'll take it. Uh, muck standalone here has. It's it feels like it's incomplete uh, as of this moment. Um, without the mute to remove, it really doesn't excel. It does get access to crunch and knock off this time around, which is going to be helpful for it, I'm sure. But lacking ice punch or any of the other elemental punches really, really push it down to not be as viable. But as it stands, it could be a great VGC Pokemon with the power of alchemy, which basically steals your ally's ability, Shadow Core, combining this with Core Shadinia is going to be interesting because that means that you are immune, basically, to anything that hits you outside of the Earthquake. So that's your only weakness, but that's that's for VGC. In singles, I don't believe uh, Muck is going to excel that much more, and it's sadly due to its priority move being Shadow Sneak, not Sucker Punch. Um, it does have access to Curse, which means that it could do stuff I'm just not sure it can do them well enough to pull it off in the long run because of the slow speed. You kind of don't want to be a slow poison type because that mainly be is forcing you to take hits and since Earthquake is so common, ah, it just isn't enough. Having that said, I like Muck, I want it to do well and I really really hope there are more moves than the, of course that has been distributed to us because if not, then Muck is basically, you know, a combination of Stab and Brick Break and Curse to be able to do somewhat well here in the meta. And the next Pokemon is also one of my favorite design-wise, Dog Trio. I mean, this guy though, this... <laughs> it's so brilliant, I love it. I really, really, really do. And I do understand the frustration by look the way it did, but for me and my money, thank God, this is awesome. Um, again, a new... or actually, I should say this. It doesn't get anything new to it outside of a new typing, which of course uh, now ground and steel, making it the fastest one, so eat your heart out, Excadrill. Um, it does get a lowered speed, 110 instead of 120, of course, with the original form. But instead we get, and I really can't stress this enough, we get 120 in attack, that is ferocious. And outside of that, I don't know, like I said, how much better a lowland dug trio is compared to his regular form because losing arena transfer tangle here <laughs> which is kind of funny of ability uh, of course lowered your opponent's speed by one um, basically like goo actually but outside of that it just doesn't break the boundary as well as i was kind of hoping for but um i still think dug tree will do really well and mostly because its dual typing is in contrast with, of course, uh, Exodrill, and Exodrill is just an excellent Pokemon overall, and this one is a more offensive glass cannon, and I kind of think Exodrill to some extent is that too, so seeing that they're closer to one another's attacks probably will mean that you, they're just as viable to go against, of course, one another. Like I said, the issue is, of course, losing Arena Trap, but if we fast as this guy is and hurt as hard as he will do now, then that might not be as big of an issue as it was in Generation 6, for example. And now to the last Alolan form, and yes guys, there only is one left, <laughs> it hasn't been introduced of course now, um, and that Alolan form is of course Golem, and it's a new typing, Rock Electric, so it's, it's a stun fisk of this generation, just looks a bit prettier, uh, I actually like the design here too, I do believe <laughs> it's, it's stupid, it's stupid funny, but yeah, it doesn't break new boundaries or molds, and that's something to keep in mind here, uh, and also, this guy can learn Sucker Punch, but not right now. When a Pokemon is out, make sure to send a Graveler to the Lowland region. 
and of course with Sucker Punch and get that, because I do believe that will make, well, the Golem a little more interesting to use. One thing that doesn't help for of course the Lowland Golem is that it has a new ability that is called Galvarize, which turns every normal move into electric, making for the first time ever a physical attacking rock type, I was gonna say, but no, a physical attacking electric type viable, because until now we only had Wild Charge as the D move to go for. Now, of course, because since Volt Tackle, of course, has been locked to Pikachu alone. But now we finally got Double Edge and, of course, this monster of a Pokemon. Which means that things will do damage. For for once in my life, we're going to see such a breakthrough. I, I, I'm really happy about this because it's something that I just haven't been seeing. Uh, one perk with uh, Alolan Golem, which should be mentioned, is that it has access to the likes of Bolt Switch. It could be utilized well with this bond. It is slow. It is really slow, to, uh, to be honest. But at least it could do those slow volt switches if you can utilize them well. And it doesn't necessarily have any response to rock types at this moment. Uh, or I mean, uh, other ground types. It, it's locked to use the likes of Earthquake, which it actually does get. And of course, Sonish if you so desire. It does get, of course, Fire Blast in its previous evolution. But that's about it. So it's worth keeping in mind that if you want to use this Pokemon, you should probably use it with the likes of Autonomize or Magnet Rise or even Curse if you get access to Sucker Punch. But Ground Type is definitely your your biggest issue in this kind of environment. But having that said, um, Alolan Golem could be actually a pretty usable Pokemon. And I do believe when Pokemon comes out and this thing gets Stealth Rocks and stuff like that, that it could actually break through. The, the, the unique typing is as good and bad as it gets, but uh, I'm definitely looking forward to using it because I do believe it could be passively useful, but it also has issues that are a clear indication that it has a lot of weaknesses. Oh my god, it has a lot of weaknesses. But yeah, outside of that, I do like it. I hope this guy becomes great. And uh, yeah, with that said, Thank you so much, of course, for watching. Um, I really wanted to try to go more in detail with these guys. I do realize halfway through there that I could only go so deep to analysis without actually making a moveset video out of them. But uh, what my honest thoughts about the Lolan form is that I do like that it did something unique with them. I'm a bit disappointed that they didn't raise their base stat total. I do believe that was something that they clearly needed. I do believe Marowak and Radicate definitely stands out as a sore thumb as... Pokemons that just might not push it over heads due to their natural low base stat total and they're not really trying to shift them enough to change, of course, their outlook. That's cool for Sand Slash 2 to some extent. It does have a better type combination, definitely. But I do believe it also will be, in the end, a lower tier Pokemon. But yeah, with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. What are your thoughts, by the way, of course, is these Pokemons? Are, are you having some kind of favorites? And if so, make sure to write it down below. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.